So, NCDC just confirmed the second case of coronavirus in Nigeria. And this is beginning to cause a couple of panic attacks, a couple, at least one of the responses I can see here, even though I've not scrolled down to see all the different responses. At least one of the responses here says, it don't happen. God, please, not now. I can't die without seeing Asna carrying the sex to pull. Now, whatever that means, this is a case in point of how news can create panic attacks anxiety for someone and in this video what i want to do is to share with you how to actually protect yourself from coronavirus let's jump right in okay so after seeing the news one of the first things i did was to actually jump over to world health organization their website to who's website to actually read about coronavirus now a couple of weeks ago coronavirus was actually discovered in nigeria and that should be about maybe a week ago or so maybe two weeks ago or so that it was discovered in nigeria and after that first case it got me curious i wanted to find out what are the different things going on and how can people actually protect themselves from coronavirus aside from the definite public information public information health information that is available everywhere that don't um, don't um, shake people um, don't um, stay within one meter or one feet or so from people or uh, wash your hands with um, hand sanitizers and all that um, drink water frequently and um, all those information i wanted to find out is there a scientific approach to how to actually protect yourself from contacting or being infected with coronavirus so this is the rabbit hole search that i went on and let's look at this right now okay so world Health organization actually says that coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illnesses ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as middle east respiratory syndrome and severe acute respiratory syndrome and the novel coronavirus is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans such is the case of the current covid 19 that is going on right now at least you can see that current novel coronavirus is the covid 19 outbreak now it says that coronaviruses are zoonotic which means that they are transmitted between animals and people now it says common signs of infection it says common signs of infection include respiratory systems respiratory symptoms fever cough shortness of breath and breathing difficulties and in more severe cases that is in more severe cases which means that they are they might not be more severe cases actually that's what it means infection can cause pneumonia severe acute respiratory syndrome kidney failure and even death now this actually got me interested i wanted to find out like oh really so it means that coronavirus basically all of the symptoms uh, things that show up in our immune system so i was like okay so if this if what coronavirus attacks is basically the immune system our immune system or human immune system what could be some other things that could affect the immune system and expose the immune system to the attack of coronavirus that was the idea that was the kind of um, the hypothesis i came up with in order to go on and embark on this research now before i answer that question let me first of all show you this particular document that i found on world health organization's website they have a situation report and in the situation report they they kind of create the report every single day so this is 8th of march 2020 and I'm recording this video on the 9th of March 2020. So that means that there is just a difference of 24 hours between when the last report was released and when I am doing this video. Now, so far, coronavirus has been found in eight new countries. And in total, over 100 countries have reported laboratory confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now, new countries in the last 24 hours, that is between 7th of March and 8th, of march between 8th of march and 9th of march there might be new cases or newer cases that have been confirmed but i'm working with a report that's available up until the 8th of march now if that sounds interesting here's a more interesting thing that i found so situation in numbers total and new cases in the last 24 hours so globally that is worldwide 
there are only 105,586 confirmed cases. And only the last 24 hours, 3,656 are new. Also in China, there is 80,859 confirmed cases in China. Now, out of this 80,859, if you compare it with the 105,000 that is available globally, you find that there are only 24,727 that are uh, that are in existence outside of China. So most of the cases are basically inside China. Now, the my thinking mind came up and I said, okay, if there are just 105,586 what is world population at the moment now if you look up here you see that the world population at the moment is about seven billion seven hundred sixty nine million people on the face of the earth right now so my mind went like okay so what percentage of the human available on the earth right now if there are one at least there are 105,586 cases confirmed what population is that taking up so here's the mathematics here if 105,586 is the cases confirmed and this is seven billion seven hundred and sixty nine thousand seven hundred and twenty three even if i'm going to use this seven hundred and twenty nine here as the case so i'm going to put this seven hundred and twenty nine here and then i'm going to paste that let me delete all the so even if it is the seven hundred and twenty nine that we are using you can see that the population of the earth that has coronavirus right now is about one point three five eight nine percent if I'm going to summarize that, that would be about 1.36% of the entire Earth, of the entire globe, of the entire world. Only 1% has corona or is infected, is clinically diagnosed to be infected with coronavirus at this moment. But let's look at what is something else that can actually cause the symptoms of coronavirus showing up in your body. Now, I stumbled on a post by medical news today and medical news today says anxious about the news our top tips on how to cope now here's what i actually love here it says reading the news can be stress inducing at the best of times when the news is particularly worrying many of us experience levels of anxiety so high that we can have difficulty coping now this tend to kind of confirm what went on after the after NCDC actually released the post that there is a second case of coronavirus in Ogun State, and clearly it is said that this particular case is as a reason of the contact, the first, uh, the contact with the first person who had who was infected with coronavirus. And look at here, Numero Uno here is already anxious. It don't happen, God, please, not now. If I'm going to scroll down and go down a lot more, we'll probably start seeing some other persons who are going to be who are going to be um, crying and particularly maybe even killing themselves over what's happening right now. So I'm going to open up this this thread here, so you can see this is the confirmed case. This is the post by um, by NCDC, which is the National Center for Disease Control. And you look, look at down here, you can see that I think this has been in isolation since the first case was on command. Should I bet uh, people prepare to live longer? And you can see all the plenty discussion happening. Yeah, I mean, do you have the true story in your possession? It don't happen. I don't tell them. I swear I am feeling safe. Great job. More grease to your elbow. 70, 70, you can see all these plenty things going on. Now, what usually happens is that this information begins to create a lot of anxiety. A lot of stress for people because from the first instance of coronavirus discovered in nigeria some people became panicky and they began to feel like now the reason why i could be looking at this from this angle is because first i'm a therapist second i'm a coach so usually when things like this happen i look at it from the angle of what could this be creating or what could this mean on a more personal scale so if you look at here, it says that since the first case was confirmed, the, the NCDC has been supporting the Ogun State Emergency Operations Center to respond accordingly. We urge the public not to panic. But even when they say that the public should not panic, what's the natural response to still panic? Why? Because news has the tendency to create anxiety. In fact, somebody created some uh, line for it. It says, headline distress. 
headline stress disorder. <laughs> That's what a therapist named Steven Stotzny uh, say, refers to it as stress headline stress disorder in an opinion piece for the Washington Post. So it describes his personal experience with clients in whom the growing new cycle triggered intense feelings of worry and helplessness. And he reports that this particularly affected female clients. Now, in Nigeria here, this may probably affect maybe male clients. But you can see headline stress disorder. So this wants to make me ask, how else can stress created by what is in the news how else can that stress create more infections or open people up more to infections? So this is what I found. Especially this is called PubMed. So I check PubMed for anything that has to do with psychological stress and the immune system. Now remember that coronavirus here is said to affect the immune system, right? And news kind of creates stress. So news, when you hear news like that, it creates stress. And then this stress, what does it have to do with the human with the human immune system? Now this report says that the present report meta analyzes more than three hundred empirical articles describing the relationship between psychological stress and parameters of the immune system in human participants. Now acute stressors that is stressors that are lasting more than one minute were associated with potentially adaptive upregulation of some parameters of natural immunity and down regulation of some functions of specific immunity immunity now brief naturalistic stressors that is stressors that are very brief they are not lasting for a long time such as exams tended to suppress cellular immunity while preserving humoral immunity now humoral simply means body fluid now chronic stressors were associated with suppression of both cellular and humoral measures effect of effects of event sequences varied according to the kind of event trauma versus loss subjective reports of stress generally did not associate with immune change in some cases physical vulnerability as a function of age or disease also increased vulnerability to immune change during stressors now what this simply means for your, the person who may not be able to interpret all the scientific language, it means first that when there's psychological stress, there's the tendency for the stress to affect the human immune system. When the stress lasts for a long time period, it begins to create potentially upregulation. That is, it begins to increase the um, tendency for your immune system to become overloaded. Now, when it is brief, it tends to suppress some cellular, that is, some activities that are supposed to, or uh, how your cells are meant to protect you. Now, if this kind of sounds very um, scientific, I'm going to actually simplify it later. Now, here, this is another report from PubMed, and this is published in 2016. And this is that psychological stress has been linked empirically with dysregulation of facets of the human immune system. Yet, these effects are not the same in every situation or population. So that means that stress response, our response to psychological stress can be different from individual to individual. Our response to psychological stress can be diff can be different from country to country, from state to state, from nation to nation. So, recent research has made strides towards the understanding the risk factors for immune dysregulation as well as why this risk occur. Now, this review discusses mechanisms and mediators. Now, all of that going on. Now, here's what I actually want to pay attention to. It says stress is a broad concept that compares challenging or difficult circumstances, which are referred to as stressors, or the psychological or physiological response to such circumstances, which are stress responses. Now, that means that when you when there's stress, you can either respond physically or you can respond mentally. As with the case of coronavirus, there's a tendency rather to respond. In fact, I've actually seen physical response and I've also seen mental psychological response. Now, when it comes to psychological response, people tend to panic. People tend to become anxious. People tend to become, more importantly, fearful. Am I going to catch coronavirus? Ah, am I exposed? And so, I was at two events on Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday, I was at a church. 
And I found out at the event on Friday and Saturday, it was actually a corporate training. I found that if you want to shake somebody there, they will first of all draw back. They will first of all pull back their hands and say, wait, 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 wait. Then it's either they go clean up their hands or they actually put some hand sanitizer in their hands or uh, they <laughs> shake you with their legs. <laughs> you know, all those comedy stuff that you see. Now, the interesting thing is that the normal way to protect yourself from coronavirus, the common way is to regularly and thoroughly wash your hands with soap to cover your mouth and nose when you are sneezing or when you are doing and then to dispose issue immediate, tissue immediately to avoid touching your eyes, your nose and your mouth with unwashed hands. Well, some people may not be able to do that. To maintain at least one half meters distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing, which is already creating a lot of physical response. When people sneeze now, people kind of look at you and say like, my friend in fact somebody even sent me a message the person said that she um she was going to buy something from aboki who was selling suya and as she tasted the suya she just started sneezing and coughing at the same time and it was so violent that she was doing it repeatedly for a kind a long minute by the time she was done everybody there kept quiet and were looking at her. <laughs> when she actually told me we laughed but what you found there is that even when nobody is infected because if, actually look at this, if there are only ca two cases in entire nigeria that is filled with millions of people it means that coronavirus is a rare incidence in nigeria at the moment so the physical um contact the f uh, the probability that there will be physical contact between you and the person who has been infected of the two cases that has been confirmed that it's very very low and so the i'm not going to talk about the physical side of protection i'm going to talk about the mental side of protection right now because that is more important compared to the physical try to guard your um, your your hand try to protect yourself um, and then you see a lot of people using a um, face mask up and down now if you don't have too many cases here in nigeria then you suggest that you may not need a face mask a face mask right now so what you basically need is to mentally protect yourself and when i say mentally protect yourself you can see that stress kind of opens your immune system up to coronavirus now this is an interesting thing an article i actually saw again online it says stress illness and the immune system now in order to understand what the immune system is, it's a collection of billions of cells that travel through the bloodstream. They move in and out of tissues. They move in and out of tissues and organs, defending the body against foreign bodies. They are called antigens, such as bacteria, viruses, and cancerous cells. So that means that before you can actually be infested with coronavirus or be infected with coronavirus your immune system need to first of all be attacked by something within your system so if you are looking at shaking somebody as what's going to cause you coronavirus i'm not thinking you are correct completely correct that is only one preventive measure that it may not be a protective measure now the difference between preventive is that you don't want it to happen but protection means that you're actually guiding your full system so if you think about it your immune system is it currently exposed to coronavirus does your immune system currently have some other symptoms that look like coronavirus that's what you should be thinking of right now how can you actually empower your immune system so that your immune system can be strong enough to attack anything that wants to permeate through it do you get it now now when we talk about um stress and illnesses there is a model here that i actually love and i want to actually show you so you say that stress increase increased heat rate and blood pressure impact of stress hormones of immune process on immune processes particularly corticosteroid suppresses immune system so when stress is in your system in your when you are stressed especially psychologically your immune system the corticosteroid in your immune system begins to be suppressed then your digestive system begins to be disturbed sometimes when you're stressed you begin to fat <laughs> sometimes when you're stressed some people at least in that has been my own experience some things begin to show up on your face like acne pimples and all that those are symptoms of stress and sometimes when you're stressed your voice could actually become croaky that's a 
that's even a more advanced um idea, way to find stress to know that there's actually you are actually stressed for some people they will not be able to sleep for some people they will not be able to digest the food that they eat now here is what i found about stress how stress affects you remember that what we're talking about here is both psychological and physiological physiological is the physical body psychological is what goes on in your mind your emotions and your and particularly your mind and your emotions so stress when it affects your body there it will probably be headaches your muscles will begin to have you begin to have taut muscles muscles begin to pain you or you begin to have fatigue you get tired easily or maybe screen irritation just as i explained it now for some it is acne it is pimples it's maybe spots showing up on their body breathlessness you don't you get, tend to not be able to breathe very well and when stress affects your mind you begin to worry such as the case of coronavirus when you are stressed you will most likely be psychologically affected more than the person who is relaxed and when you are stressed you begin to be you tend to have a lot of negativities around you so you begin to notice negativity when you're stressed you can make hasty decisions when you're stressed you probably have a lot of indecisions of course because you are not sure of what's going to happen so you don't want to make up your mind and then of course you have muddled thinking now when it comes to your emotions when you are stressed you lose confidence which is where fear usually playing in fact in the study of fear in my study of fear i found that stress is only a physiological and psychological response to fear so when your emotions are affected when stress gets to your emotion you begin to lose confidence you begin to become irritable and angry so any small thing can basically trigger you and you get very angry and irritable and it could also point you to signs of depression and of course apprehension where you begin to avoid things or alienation where <laughs> coronavirus may kind of screw up <laughs> you they kind of uh how should i say the quarantine you somewhere now when it comes to behavior stress makes you accident prone so you can basically you can basically put yourself in a situation where you get to fall into an accident simply because you are stressed and then of course loss of appetite and perhaps for some people it is loss of sex drive and for some other people it is restlessness and for some people when they are stressed that's when they drink more do you get it now now how can you then help your immune system against stress how can you help your immune system so that you are protected against coronavirus that is where i'm going to share with you how prolonged fasting induces stem cell stem cell regeneration and reverse immunosuppression now this is also an article on pubmed now, what this means is that prolonged fasting, that is, um, not eating too much, can actually help your system, your immune system, to kind of regenerate itself. It can help your immune system create new stem cells and reverse the suppression that has happened to your immune system. So, it lets your immune system come alive back now i'm going to read a few lines from this article from this research this immune system defects are at the center of aging and a range of diseases can you see that immune system defects are at the center of aging that's why people usually look older than their age and a range of diseases here we show that prolonged fasting reduces circulating igf one levels and pk activity in various cell Populations. Now, if you're wondering what's PKA activity, you might want to check this article. I'm going to put the link down in the description of this video. So, when all of this um, happen, it leads to signal transduction changes in long-term hematopoietic stem cells and niche cells that promote stress resistance, self-renewal, and lineage balance regeneration. Now, what this means is that when you engage in prolonged fasting now what is prolonged fasting it basically means prolonged fasting lasts for 48 to 120 hours that is between two days or three four days fasting now the human system is not designed to live without food 
but new research is beginning to show that you can actually get your system to regenerate itself now this is a publication that became available in june of 2015 so now it means that prolonged fasting is when you stay off food for 48 to 120 hours now could this also be a signal to what is referred to as intermittent fasting of course in intermittent fasting there is the um, principle of um, 16 8 that is you eat within an eight hour range and then you go off food for the next 16 hours now what you get to so you might want to study intermittent fasting in dough because i'm not going to that with this video so what you find that is that staying off food can actually help you activate pathways that enhance cellular resistance to toxins and stress and even this document here says that he, when staying off food it can enhance cellular resistance to toxins to infections and stress both in mice that is rats and humans so the psychological changes caused by pf that's prolonged fasting are much more pronounced than those caused by calorie restriction or overnight fast do you get it now so prolonged fasting is different from overnight fast where you just fast for okay i'm not going to eat in the night so i'm going to stay without food till morning that's not what prolonged fast means it simply means staying away from food for a longer time about 48 to 120 hours now personally i've not fasted in a very long while simply because i've learned how to use my diet the food i eat and my way of life to actually help me empower my immune system now i may not go into that for this video but i just wanted to share with you in this video that when you are stressed you open your immune system up to infections such as coronavirus so if you want to protect yourself from coronavirus the first way of course as we often touted in media is to protect yourselves by doing everything media is telling you to do cover your mouth cover your hand stay one and a half meters away from anybody who is coughing or sneezing and um, protect yourself wash your hand more regularly but more importantly is to protect yourself psychologically to actually develop a psychological grit or a psychological resistance towards anything that creates stress for you that is the best way to actually protect yourself against coronavirus because if it doesn't enter psychologically it can't enter physiologically oh i think i just rhymed today but what this is what it means if coronavirus does not enter your system psychologically through your thoughts through the things you imagine through the way you use your mind it won't enter physically that is you even when you touch the person who has coronavirus which is maybe two out of the hundreds of thousands of people that you will meet that is if you travel all around nigeria that's when you will meet hundreds of thousands of persons but in a day you may not meet more than <laughs> last last you meet only 200 people in a day <laughs> last last that's the average that a normal nigeria can actually meet in a day 200 maximum 500 persons and that's very rare so if you consider yourself right now that how many people are you meeting every day is it up to 100 is it up to 200 persons if you're not meeting up to those numbers then it means that the best way to protect yourself is basically to protect yourself psychologically that is how to protect yourself from coronavirus infection that's what i wanted to share with you in this video and my name is Dio Samuel. If you enjoyed what I've shared with you in this video, I know that this video is not the typical type that I come and do step one, step two, step three. But I needed to actually put together this data so that you can actually understand that there is a physical dimension of coronavirus and a psychological dimension of coronavirus. You can't run away from the physical while accommodating the psychological so rather than running away from the physical, why not take care of the psychological dimension of coronavirus by protecting your thoughts, protecting your mind, protecting your body, protecting your entire system, your emotions and your behaviors from stress and helping you to tighten and empower and strengthen your immune system. If you do this, even when coronavirus physically attacks your body, 
your immune system will be strong enough to actually protect you now there are diverse ways that you can actually protect your immune system of course because i'm working with research and what science actually proves here that's why i'm actually showing you only these ones but if you would like or if you know any way that you could protect your immune system you can share that with me in the comment below i'll be glad to actually have a discussion and a conversation with you over that that said i am dyer samuel and this is my channel thank you very much for subscribing thank you very much for watching this video i'm going to see you in the next video